Right, let's get started. Um, guys, so first of all, um, as you all know, today's Wednesday, we have a strategy um, webinar. Of course, I'm going to be answering questions like I already have a question from Aditya. Um, by the way, I'm so confused about the New Zealand dollar. So most likely referring to what's going on and why the New Zealand dollar cat is strong. Um, it's a very interesting topic. We can um, discuss that later. I don't think I have the visuals anymore to show you guys, but there were some expectations about um, RBNZ this morning. Um, well, not this morning, it was lunchtime to do um, 75 base points cut. Um, you know, 40% of the market was expecting that. And the rest of the market was expecting to be 50 base points cut. Um, so from from the from the worst to the best, let's say, um, what happened was a 50 base points cut and not a 25 basis points cut. So therefore, um, you know, the market reacted as bullish because everyone was expecting 70, but then it happened at only 50, so 25% off from what was expected. Therefore, um, that's that's majority the reason why New Zealand dollar is is strong after the release. Um, you know, such as pairs like New Zealand dollar CAD, um, all the pairs like Aussie dollar New Zealand, um, Aussie dollar CAD as well, and you know a few others that we can uh, definitely talk about later on. But before we go any further, let's just go to the risk disclaimer first. Um, I'm going to give a minute to everyone to everyone to read. I'm going to mute myself, and then we go from there. Okay, let's get started. So everyone had some time to read. Let me take the, the risk disclaimer off now, and let me bring all of these other ones to here. Perfecto. All right. So. No, guys, um, we're going to be using, as everyone knows, Wednesday is the DXM trading strategy. So we're going to be using um, FinLogix as our um, platform to that. So if you don't know how to access FinLogix, it's very, very easy. Um, you can just come to Google and then type FinLogix.com. Um, by the way, I'm going to be sending the link on the chat. There we go. So the link to access FinLogix is on the chat of the webinar. You can access, it's free. You can create your account as well. If uh, Let me just sign out from my account so you guys can see what's going to be. So that's how um, for you it's going to be looking at. You can log in if you have an account already or you can sign up. If you click on sign up, you can just put your name, last name. Um, and then if you have an account ready, just click login. Then this is my account ready. So just going to use this one. If it goes, I don't know. Oh, gosh. Let me just type. Is it not typing? Hmm. Let me just refresh the page. Clicking login, there we go. Login, and then you can put your photo if you like. You can customize your profile. So if you click on here, ink, you can come into um, settings, and then you can put your name, your about, and then you can um, edit your password, edit your name. It's all customizable. It's really, really nice. It's like a community. We're building a community for traders that really wants to be on the market, be interacting with other traders, posting signals, etc. Right. So here you come to chart. That's what we're going to be using. And then as well, uh, we're going to be using um, into market sentiment. So come to tools, market sentiment. I'm going to send the link to market sentiment as well. And so everyone have access to it. So now you have access to this page. Sorry. You have access to the main page, this one, on chart. 
and then you have access to market sentiment as well. Um, the link for the DXM strategy um, workbook, the Excel pretty much, is on the Telegram, but I'm going to send right here to everyone on the chat again. Uh, here you go. It's on there, Google Docs. Sorry, call it wrong. It's, call it, it's actually spelled Google Docs. Google Docs, done. All right, Google Docs in there. So um, pretty much from the 13th of this month, and then we've we've got a trade on the 13th, so I'm supposing to be on a Wednesday, yeah, the third Wednesday of the month, well, the second Wednesday of the month, sorry. So we got a trade on short euro pound um, on the 13th, and then on the 20th last week we got a long trade on gbp jpy that's really good and then uh, we had a pending order on aussie dollar at the price of 065666 so let's have a look at that so first trade here uh was running and i think we hit take profit so the profit level was at uh, well let's go everything again right so entry price was 83504 so here, euro pound, one hour chart. Let's go for horizontal line, 83, 504. 104, this style will be black for entry point. Then the stop loss was 84, 314. 84314, 84314. It's going to be on red because there was stop loss. All right. So that's very far away from our stop loss. Or take profit was at 826694. And that's going to be green. There we go. So first trade. So first trade being green. So take profit on this trade. Very good. We hit take profit, I think, 2%. Yeah, because the risk was 2%. So swaps, we have to calculate the swaps because we've opened this trade on the 13th. So let me bring something here. So let's go for, this is from uh, MetaTrader 4. Um, it's really easy for you to get access so, so you know how much you're paying swaps. Just go into your MetaTrader 4, um, click Ctrl U. This is ACY MetaTrader. So if you're using another broker, I wouldn't you know, be looking at those numbers, but that's what uh, we charge from swaps. We were short on Euro Pound. So let's go Euro Pound. There we go. So go down here and then we have the swap long and swap short. So we actually got paid $067 for each day we've stayed on this trade, okay? For um, a full lot. How many lots were we using? Position size ones, one lot and 62. Um, one lot and 62. So basically, let's calculate it very quickly. I hope you guys can understand my maths. So here. So that's a 0 0.67 for a full lot, right? So we need to understand how much is 60, 62% of that. So 0 0.67, 67, 62. So that's 41%. So 41%, so 41 cents, sorry, 41 cent. So that means 67 plus 41 is equal to $1.08. So $1.08, how many days did we stay? So from the 13th to, to Friday. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Was it? Let me check. Yeah, eight days. Um, so times eight. 
yeah, eight dollars and sixty four cents. But then we had two um, one Wednesday that was um, this one here, and that was triple swaps, right? So basically, triple swaps is every Wednesday we have triple. So one dollar and how much was that? One dollar and eight cents times three. It's three dollars and twenty four. So we add that on here, three dollars point twenty four. So on swaps, we got paid eleven dollars and eighty eight cents. Let's say, um, sorry, format number money money money. There we go. So eleven dollars and eighty eight cents. Is it not counting? Format number. Yes. Uh, existing inevitable. There are Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure why isn't not going, but I would have had to go. Eleven dollars. All right. There you go. Eleven dot um Eleven dollars and eighty-eight cents. Okay. Now, what was the profit we've made on that? Let's have a look. So from here, let me grab my fantastic tool. There we go, short position. So that's the entry point right here on the 13. Yeah, because that was a, um... oh, actually no. Sorry, we got triggered on this order on the day of the 16th. So wait a minute. We've placed the order on um, on the thirteen, but we got placed on the sixteen. So that was fifteen. Sorry, on the fifteen, right? So we've only got paid less one, two, less um, two dollars and eighty cents. So less two dollars and eight. So that's nine dollars and eight. All right, nine dollars. So let's just do just do nine. There we go. So how many points did we've had? So that's 810 points, so 81 pips. So we've had one lot in 62. So basically 810 times 1.62. That is equal to $1,302 of profit per factor. And that as well is... All of that is a one thousand three hundred and twelve. Was that one thousand three hundred and twelve? Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. So our our total position. Sorry, our total total gain or loss will be this plus this. And that is $1,321. Just to start, that's pretty good. All right, for those who got the first trade, that was a good trade. Um, and for those who don't know the strategy, the strategy um, disclaim, uh, the, the strategy description is right here. So the Dixam Forex Spot strategy exclusively trades the Forex Spot market, targeting both major and process currency pairs. It leverages the market sentiment tool on Finlogix. Uh, affectionately nicknamed DXM to guide directional buyers by consistently positioning against the majority sentiment. The key components of the strategy include the risk management that employs the average trade, average yeah. true range, the ATR, mm -hmm. multiplied by six, so six times ATR, to define stop loss levels, ensuring a calculate risk yeah, exposure. Yeah. And the profit target is maintaining a minimum one to one point eight risk reward ratio for trade profit levels. Entry points utilizing technical levels. So basically, why we yes. took this trade on this point here was because we've had a Fibonacci retracement on the 60 right there. And then we've placed our position um, on the market at the 50% level of retracement on Fibonacci. Combine it with the resistance. So now that we've had a chance to the right here. Okay, so one touch, two, 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 and then here as well, 
and then here as well, here as well, and then now coming back to this area. Okay, so that's really great trait. And take this off. So it was a good trait. Um, next trait we had was a pending order on. So let me put this in green. Oh, actually, let me do this so from here all the way to here. Let me do a con conditional formatting. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, there we go. Conditional formatting. That's good. Perfect. So that's positive. That will be on green. If it's negative, it's going to be on. Sorry. Let me just do it again, guys. If it's green, it's positive. If it's red, it's negative. Perfect. All right. Next trade we took was GBP JPY on the 20th of 11. So let's go GBP JPY. So GBP JPY on the 20th of 11. I think this trade actually gives us a loss. But that's fine. So GBP JPY 20 of 11. Oh, sorry. 20 of 11. 2020 it was here and that was the price of 197091 7 0 91 0 91 perfect so that trade was took on here actually right there yeah this trade was on a loss let's understand why we've got to stop stopped out on this trade so as we can see right here the image that we, we follow up this strategy okay the strategy was um we follow up the plan so the strategy was good there's nothing wrong with it um, we can see that the minority, the majority was on the sell side, and we follow up the minority that was right here, so bullish. Um, but, you know, the trade didn't work out. So what should we do now? Um, based on you guys, what would you guys do when you have a negative trade? Do you sit and crop? Or do you try to analyze and see what actually is happening with the market and try to understand why did that happen? Or you go and then analyze it and move on. Okay. I want to I want to hear from you guys because you know, talking profits, everyone talk profits. It's beautiful. And it's so good to talk profits and you know, green pips and you know, lots of lots of pips. It's really good. But what should we do when we have a losing strike? So, Switz, um, sorry, Stuart says, Stuart says, analyze and see what to do. Aditya says, why did that happen in reasons and analyze where it might be safe? That's, that's completely correct. That, that's it. Right? We, we, we can't endorse the losses, right? Oh, it was a it was a loss, you know, it's the biggest, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the best point for me to learn. No, you learn from wins and losses. You're not here to learn only from losses. Otherwise, what's the point? Okay. So yes, we learn from both. Now let's understand what happened here. So technically, um, if we pay attention, the market was on a very, very strong uptrend. Okay. But right here, we've changed the structure. And I didn't notice that on that day. All right. So we were going up and then not retracing back. So that was up here. Okay. And then it was up here and then pulled back again. And then we've broke this down. So basically, we caught the trade on the very, very long, wrong side right when the trade was about to begin a short, as we can see right here. That was coupled with fundamentally um, 
fundamentally aspect coupled with um um sorry guys let me just say this yeah perfect this was coupled with the fundamentally japanese yen strength okay now i don't think we have that tool on thing logics but i want to show to you guys the currency strength right here let me just load that and let me change this to uh weekly yeah that's good for seven days because that trade we took on the 20 wasn't it yeah on the 20s so seven days and we can see that the japanese yen that's the blue ones right there this one here as you guys can see this one this big boy here has been stronger than any other currency okay and that the pound the pound is on green is on this guy here that this spring here on the bottom i mean that one there that is flashing now look at that right so since we took when we took the trade on the 20th of november right here on the border and you can see the date we were on the right side because japan japan was japanese yen was weakening as of um the pound was strengthening and then the market continues 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 and then we had a reversal on the 21st of november okay right here and then the japanese yen continues to go stronger and then the pound continues to go lower and that means right here we can see that happening right japanese yen stronger and um pound weakening and not only with um gbp jpy same goes for us dollar jpy as well okay we can see that japanese yen is taking the lead very very strongly even with the usa that is even if the even with the us dollar that is very very strong okay so basically it's not only about um it's not only about you know we we just take the the trade out of nowhere we need to understand as well the reasons and that was the reason japanese yen strengthened now why did japanese yen strengthen the reason why japanese yen strengthened was because we had comments from with them making the japan very very, very bullish okay so on um we had a very we have a very unique sort of monetary policy coming from um japan and that happened because you know market speculates that the that bank of japan will hike 50 base points and not 25 in next month i don't think it's true i think it's 25 <laughs> should be more than enough but that's what it's happening with the market and therefore this is why we've um, lost this trade it's completely fine okay it's completely fine so let's let's calculate when we've actually got stopped out and um see how much was our loss trade so gbp jpy we're gonna still in profit because we've took a very big trade here um but it's pretty much zero to zero right now okay because zero two percent here to two percent so that's going to be like uh it's going to be low because this trade i've took it was 162 lots was on a big account but if we were to calculate for a five thousand account that should be zero zero four as well zero zero five so basically the risk percentage is what it matters the most and that's in um break even at the moment right um so just lose too much time let's move on to australian dollar us dollar that is um the next trade idea we've had on here on this one and let's have a look on that okay so basically we had a short pending on the price of 06566 so let's go and have a look zoom out did we got triggered i do think we got let's have a look that was on the the order was positioned on the 20 so anything up after 20 so 06566 06566 0 there is six five six six yeah that's correct 
Unfortunately, we didn't got triggered, but look at that. That was a nice trade, see? So where's my pen? So if the market was about to go a few more pips up, we would get this all trend down, okay? Take profit was somewhere around here. Stop loss was somewhere around here, if I remember. So we would have a nice RR. But this is life. Why did the market didn't catch your order? Should we try now? No, let's have a look why. So we had our order placed um, at the blue line on the 50% of the Fibonacci. Okay, let me take off some colors here. It's too much things to organize. Okay, so we had the 61 level right here, the 50% level that it was what was what I was expecting to be. And then the 30 to 38 and 23, I don't count much on those two. I'm more between 50 and 61. So usually when I'm placing orders, I try to place orders in the middle of this level. Okay, and that's exactly what we've done on GBPJPY as well, if you guys didn't notice. But that's exactly what we've done on GBPJPY. Mm -hmm. So um, between 50 to 61, that's where I want to uh, look to, to place my order. Okay, between here in the middle. Uh, maybe on 50, maybe on 61, but not above and not below that. On that on that level here is the sweet spot. Usually that's going to be coupled with um, support and resistance levels. But as we can see, the market didn't trigger or order. So um, if you were paying attention, you could go to a smaller time frame, like a five minute. So let me zoom out, move all the way up, and try to catch a you know a reversal sort of um, movement. Maybe on this pullback, you could be catching it and then ride the wave down. Uh, but there is, um, you know, always an opportunity to be um, to be able to get it. Um, unfortunately, the market didn't get our order, so that order has been cancelled. Sorry. All right, that order has been cancelled. Let me just change this color to gray. And let me put this on the middle. Perfect. And let me. Oh, Google Docs is not that good. Things that one. And let me delete. All right. Good. So this order has been cancelled. This one has been in profit, so that's good. Okay, so let's move on and see what we got for this week. Oh, wow, GBPAUD. Damn, that's that's crazy. Um, let's definitely have a look on GBPAUD first. So GBPAUD. GBPAUD is saying only 1% of the traders are bullish. Okay. So if only 1% of the traders are bullish, that means the market should go up. But it doesn't feel right. Okay, because we do have a sort of support level somewhere here. Mm. Even if we look like, okay, you know, market is going down. From here, sorry. From here to there, should we look to a continuation because it has been on a fullback here and then the market has broke down this trend, broke up the high and then coming back to a pullback somewhere here to continue to go higher. Maybe targeting this level here, that, that's, that, that's a beautiful target to be honest. Uh, right there. That's a really nice target actually. It broke the resistance. Yes, Aditya. We can actually you can actually see right there, you know, some sort of shy. Let's go for the uh, the half, the 30 minutes chart. You can look at that right here. You can look at it, but then this candle doesn't doesn't favor me. 
The pound is not that strong to be taking this trade. Let's go next one. Ends in the USD bullish. That's a good trade. Let's have a look. New Zealand dollar just released the monetary policy. Um, it was 50, uh, 50 base points cut. Oh, there's a lot of missing prices. That's not good. I have to check with my team. Uh, let's go for the one hour. There we go. New Zealand dollar. Besides the New Zealand dollar being very strong at the moment, I don't think this would be a, how can I say, a con continuation of strengthening. I'm, I am I like to believe um, that the US dollar will take front, most likely. Okay. So let's let's see and, 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 and have a look on that because what it could potentially happen is you know yes this this percentage this percentage here of 25 percent bullish can be correct but then what's going to happen in the mark will go up break this up break this high and then it comes down okay so somewhere around that most likely it's what we're going to be um be going to to see because the US dollar is still very strong after especially after the Trump imposed the twenty five percent tariffs on Canada and ten percent tariffs on um, China as uh, you guys know I've talked about that yesterday okay so the next trade Euro JPY bullish let's have a look Euro JPY bullish not to share about that because Japanese yen is very strong at the moment as we know. And euro is not that strong. It's one of the weakest currencies at the moment. So definitely, we don't want to catch this falling knife. Not going to waste much time talking about that. Um, pound dollar. Um, pound dollar is still, you know, pound is somewhat strong, but the US dollar is the second strongest currency um, of the moment at the, mm -hmm. at the time. So Japanese yen is the first, US dollar is the second, and then CHF is the third. And then we got New Zealand dollar. So I don't think it would be worth as well to risk some capital on here. Okay. Not GBPUSD. Here is CHF. Here is CHF bullish. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Here's CHF. Let me confirm if that data that um, FinLogic is showing is correct, because it's it doesn't look like it's correct. Let me have a look on Prime Market Terminal. Let's come to DXM. Yeah, it's supposed to be opposite. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Short. Majority of the people are long. So right here. What's, uh, what was the pair again? Here is HF. Uh, majority of the people are short. Majority of the people are long, so we should be shorting. So that, that data is, is the opposite, actually. Interesting. That's wrong. We're supposed to be shorting here is HF. Okay. Yeah, now it makes more sense, right? Because when we look to currency strength, we have euro being the red one right at the bottom the last one in here right here and just reload that page again there we go so if i click on euro oh, it doesn't show yet okay that's all right but yes um so basically you can see right here that you know euro is very very weak and chf is the third the third strength stronger currency so you know if if you, I, I do believe that we should be looking to short Iris HF. Let's have a look at the ATR. Average true range. Right now it's pricing 58. So 58 times six. 
Well, is it 58? Yeah, 58. So 58. 348 points. So 30, 140. Uh, let's say 35 pips. So from 90 to 700. To. Ninety three hundred, somewhere around here. Let's call it. Let's call it forty pips here. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's a good. I that's a good opportunity actually. A very quick trade here. Let's go for the um thirty minutes. Yeah, we should we should be looking to to find some nice opportunities here. But if we if we should go for an opportunity, I probably would go to, I think. Um, well, let's continue to have a look. Okay, nothing picked my attention today, to be honest. And we have to be patient. It's not like let's trade, let's trade, let's trade. Okay? This GBPAUD just doesn't make sense as well. Doesn't look right for me, those numbers, guys. Yeah, so majority short and long. So we've we just had on the 26th of November. Let's have a look on GBPAUG. Yeah, the 26th. Uh, yeah, maybe five or ten different. The 26th, right here. So, right here, we've had the change of sides, positions. That does look a good trade when we think about it. Okay. Yeah, bullish. Right there. But we could even expand that to maybe here, but then that's too close, most likely here, um, to a targeting this area. Oops, sorry. Hmm. It does make a good trade. Yep. Break down, break up, coming back, pull back, continuation to go higher, break this stop. Let's see if it broke the top. No, it, oh yeah, it broke the top. Right, it was a very shy break, but it broke the top. I think we should wait for a pullback somewhere around those levels to continue to go higher. So what I would do is I would do a fifty Fibonacci, cheeky cheeky fifty, right here, and I should place my orders somewhere around this level. Okay, let me just exclude this. Let me delete this as well. And then let's have a look at the ATR. What's it? Oh, that's a 30 minute. Okay, let's go for the one hour. Okay, makes more sense. Right, so that should be our entry point. Now let's have a look on the ATR. It's giving to us 100, 197. Okay, 197 times six. 1,182 points, so 1,000, so 118 pips. So 118 pips will be... And then it does it. Here, below these two lows. Okay, that looks like a trade for me, guys. That definitely looks like a trade for me. I will place my stop loss right here. So this red. And now my take profit has to be at least 1.8 times that. So basically times 1.8. It has to be at least 2,000, um, sorry, 212 um, pips. Okay, that's the take profit. So let's have a look on that now. So 94, 185, 94, 200, 94, 200, 
Bye there. So that's the trade I have for today. Let's Euro GBP now uh, Australian dollar GBP AUD long. Um, looking to come back, take or trade. Um, you know that's a buy limit. So today would be GBP AUD, and it's on twenty seven or um, eleven. And that's a. I'm oh, sorry. That's a buy limit on the price of let's have a look get it here 193 there we go i don't know why is that not counting to me one dot Okay, perfect. Yeah. Now let's have a look at the stop loss. There you go. Stop loss here. Oh, sorry. 1.92. 995 1.982995 there you go i don't know why it's not anyway we know that it's you know tp will be on 196 200 let's call these 196 200 but um it's perfect tp and then swaps, we don't know yet. Um, position size, let's calculate the risk size for this one. As we are at break even here, pretty much, and this one didn't got um, triggered, okay? Um, I think we should go for somewhere around one and a half to 2% again. So I'm just gonna go for 2% on this trade. And the position size would be 004, 005, sorry. And now we wait. Let me put this on that 12. Perfect. Sorry, guys. Perfect. Now we should wait and then come back here. Let's take a screenshot of the um, Binlogix, UVP AUG. My screenshot tool. So a copy use together. Perfect. So then what happens if I trade one lot? Does that count towards my local balance? Perfect. All right, guys. So we have our um fourth trade. Um this trade here was on a loss, so pretty much we have break even. Um, and then we have this trade here coming in to be a good trade. Wow, we only got one trade today. Interesting. Now let's wait for that to be to trigger or entry point and then probably hopefully give us a good trade. Now let's have a look at the chat. Hello, sorry, I joined late. What's about the Australian dollar? Is it strong? Well, let's have a look at currency strength. So Australian dollar is on the um deep uh, sorry strong blue line so the strong blue line is the one two three fourth line to the bottom bottom to top so it's you know it's somewhat weak um but just compare it depends what you pair it with if you pair it with the new zealand dollar it will be strong uh sorry with the canadian dollar it will be stronger if you pair it with the euro it will be stronger and with the pound it will be stronger now, if you pair it with New Zealand dollar, not that strong. If you pair it with CHF, definitely weak. If you pair it with US dollar, definitely weak. And if you pair it with JPY, definitely weak. If you're pairing with Euro, as you say on the comments, Euro AUD, it's a good opportunity to long, uh, to short that, sorry. So come here. Let me take this. Euro AUD. Yeah, I see a good opportunity to short here. Yeah, I go pull back. 
um, most likely coming to these levels again. It's actually a, a nice other trade. Let me have a look here very quick. Your AUD. Look to the projects. There you go. Mm, it's 50 50 pretty much. 50 50. And here it says, yeah, 41% is long. Minority is long. Yeah, look, I would say it's good for short, to be honest, because the euro, when we look to the currency strength, is right on the bottom. And the Australian dollar is still is still below the zero line, so it's still a negative, but you know it's still stronger than the euro. So definitely a good opportunity to short the mark, but it could actually continue to go high. Um, but there is a nice target down here as well. Anyways, next question. Uh, what about AUDCHF? Well, AUDCHF, as I was saying, CHF is really really strong at the moment compared to Australian dollar. So I wouldn't, you know, look to long that market as, as you can see right here. But yeah, I wouldn't be looking too long that. I would be looking too short or stay out of the market. Right? But there is no really good opportunity here to short as well because we are right on the support area that could just bump in, you know? So just be careful with that. All right, guys, so for today, we got this trade, GBP AOD. Um, as you know, I don't like to, you know, catch any trade, just go and catch a thousand trades just to get numbers. I like quality over quantity. <clears throat> so we had a GBP AOD buy limit order at the price of 193,849, risking 2% of the count, 005 lots. Um, the stop loss would be on 1.92995. Take profit would be on 1.962. And then we look and wait. There's a very good probability of this trade to work on our favor. Right? Coming back, taking this order and continue to go higher. All right? Okay. So that's it for today. I hope you guys um, have learned something. I hope it could, um, you know, aggregate some value over your Wednesday. I see you tomorrow on Thursday's webinar as usual. And yeah, guys, have a good trade. Have a good day and uh, trade safe. See you guys. Bye-bye.